I can't tell you how excited I am because we are on the search to find one of Borneo's most recognizable animals. Bornean elephants, the island's largest land animal. Despite being commonly referred to as pygmy elephants, there's nothing small about an animal that stands 2.5 meters tall, weighing in at a colossal four tons. To maintain their massive size, Bornean elephants have a massive appetite to match, consuming up to 150 kilograms of plant matter every day. In order to keep feeding, Bornean elephants need to keep moving. And in the fragmented landscapes of the Kinabatangan, this often brings them into palm oil plantations adjacent to their natural forest habitats. Once inside a plantation, a single elephant, let alone a herd, can cause thousands of ringgits worth of crop damage, whilst also potentially endangering the plantation workers. In order to manage the human-elephant conflict here in Borneo, it's essential we learn as much as possible about the feeding and movement behavior of Borneo's big, beautiful elephants. I'm with Shasha, who is studying the elephants living on the Kinabatangan and we are on a mission to find them and learn more about their feeding behavior. My name is Shasha Ji and I'm from Keningau, Sabah. I'm studying the elephant feeding ecology in the Kinabatangan area, focusing in human modified landscape in the, inside the palm oil plantation. The reasons why I chose to study elephants because I was fascinated by their matriarchal society which consists of 8 to 20 and can come up until hundreds of individual per herds which is amazing. Every time I do my field work there is always something new that I learned and it's interesting. There is one extent the elephants were eating and then there is another time that they were playing and they're just like a human kind of society. Or when they are in the plantation, they are exposed to poachers, hunters. For a long term, it will affect the health of the elephants because they belong to the wild. Without these elephants, they will be in balance in the ecosystem. We can't just let this elephant go extinct because they are our identity of, of Sabah. In a palm oil plantation, not far from the Dano Girang Field Center, We've heard reports of a lone male elephant wearing a GPS collar. As it happens, this is an elephant that Shasha is already familiar with, known as Sandi. Collared by Sabah's Wildlife Rescue Unit, Sandi is just one elephant involved in Danau Girang's larger study on elephant spatial ecology in the Kinabatangan. Heavily involved in the study, is Dr. Farina Othman, who is also Shasha's scientific supervisor. So today, our mission is to find Sandi and get close enough for Shasha to record detailed data on his feeding behavior. Are you picking up any signal? Currently, no. There's no, there's no beeping sound. It means that um, he's still quite far from this area. Do you think we need to go further in? Um, we we need to keep looking um, in this area because the workers of the, this plantation said that they saw the elephant here yesterday. So there may be chances of it's us here. finding him here. Yeah. This is an um, old footprints of Sandy. Maybe will lead to you know where he is now. Look at this, Shasha. Yeah. Can this be from an elephant? Sandy might rip this off using his tusk and then trying to eat the inner parts of this um, palm tree. There are some other visible tracks. elephant tracks around here. Ada air ke dalam sini nih? Ya ada bekas tanah. 
So these guys are saying that this is Sunday's speeding area. He was seen yesterday and Shasha is trying to find his signal right now. With clear signs of Sunday's presence and after speaking to the plantation workers, we jumped in the truck and set off on a wild elephant chase. But unfortunately, our trail ran cold. However, during the night, we received news from the plantation workers. Sandy was back and he was hungry. It's 4.50 a.m. We're going back to the plantation to look for the elephant before he goes back into the jungle. Back in the plantation, it didn't take long to lock on to our elusive elephant. Did you pick up a signal? Yeah, fairly sound of beeping. By the sound of the signal, how far do you think we are from Sandy? <laughs> Approximately 500 meters. Okay. Then, with daylight breaking, we spotted him. As you can see, that Sandy is eating right now. So, um, he's probably, he'll be eating um, ferns and the central rookies of the oil palm mm. and some of the vines and um, zingiberaceae, um, just the inner part of the zingiberaceae. Is that why he comes into the plantation every day? Yeah, most probably. Easy food, easy access. The workers didn't disturb him, they didn't chase him away, so he felt quite um, relaxed and felt quite a bit safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, he's right behind you, cameraman. He, want, he wants to go out. Go, 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 go. Beautiful. He's enormous. I am starstruck. This is apparently what he does every day. He goes out in the night to feed in the plantation. And in the morning, when the light comes out, he goes back into the jungle and we're right now following him. As Sandy slowly made his way through the plantation, undisturbed and eating as he went, Shasha was finally able to record her detailed data on his feeding behavior, and then began to tell me why this information was so important. So it is important for us to understand their feeding behavior so that we can come up with a better mitigation and management for the elephants. We can propose to the plantation manager mm. so that they can exclude the plants that the elephants eat from being sprayed by pesticide or herbicides. For this uh, human-elephant conflict, where maybe we can you know, plant um, some plants that maybe we can help to prevent the elephant from coming in or um, from coming out from the forest or in the plantation. Then, as predicted, after finishing his breakfast, Sandy slowly made his way back into the neighboring forest and his natural home. As Shasha learns more about the feeding behavior of the Kinabatangan's elephants, there's hope that new regulations can be put in place to reduce the potential for human-elephant conflict. Helping keep our iconic elephants and the local people with whom they share this habitat safe. <laughs>